Happy Tuesday, everyone. I'm Kelly Manzoni, back for this month, every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Today's class is formulated a little bit differently than all the other previous classes that we've done with stick mobility. This is the first month that we're introducing a modality, and we're gonna be using a kettlebell today, and if you don't own a kettlebell, that is totally fine. You could supplement with a dumbbell. We're also going to need one short stick, one long stick, access to a sidewall, and to the ceiling. And I just wanted to cover a little bit of information first before we get into class. So we're going to be mobilizing our body with the short and long stick, and then we're going to, in the middle section of our class today, I'm going to demonstrate how I've been implementing stick mobility for the past five years into my kettlebell training and my workshops and my personal practice along with my personal training clients. I have two style kettlebells here. The larger bell over here is a kettlebell sport competition bell, 12 kg. And then here I have a hard style bell, 16 kg. So even though this bell is heavier, the dimensions of sport style bells, no matter what so, uh, weight the bell is, they're all the same dimensions, where hard style is a little bit more compact and they do vary in size, dependent on weight and brand. So getting started, we're gonna begin with our short stick, kayaking our arms, warming up and mobilizing our upper body. So we're gonna take our stance a little bit wider than hip width. The camera tends to flip me, so even though this is my left hand, I'm gonna call it my right so that you could follow along. Before we get started, I was having some internet issues and I just wanna make sure that we're connected. And we are, okay. So you're gonna place your short stick mobility stick right on your right hip. In your horse stance, we're gonna to start to kayak forward. At the moment, I want you to keep your hips facing forward and just start to focus on applying a little bit of pressure into each end of the stick, maybe about 20, 30% of your strength. Keeping the chest fairly still, hips fairly still. Let's go for four more. One, two, three. Now on four, I want you to start to add a little bit of rotation through your T-spine. Hips though are still gonna continue to face forward like headlights. And if you can, I'd love for you to perform class barefoot especially as we get into our kettlebell work because I want you to feel that connection with the ground, right? The connection to the ground is gonna help you to create some, some stability and strength. Now, we're gonna kayak in reverse, so up and back to our left first. Breathing, keeping your breath nice and balanced throughout class. I perform diaphragmatic breathing. Diaphragmatic breathing is when you're gonna close your mouth, rest the tongue on the roof of your mouth, and focus on inhaling and exhaling through the nose only. Now we're gonna add a little bit of rotation through the upper body, again into the T-spine, up and back. Apply that pressure into the stick. Let's go for four more. One, two, three, four. Take a moment to come center, a little bit of a pendulum. So the work that we're doing in class one, because I'll be here this whole month, and Ray and Jesse are also gonna be implementing kettlebells. We're gonna start slow and progress each week. Let's go for four more pendulums. Up one, bicep in line with the ear, two, three, one more. Excellent. Take a moment, shake out your legs, shake out your upper body. I'm gonna go a little bit on a, a diagonal here. Reclaim that, reclaim that stick mobility horse stance. So you're gonna soften into the knees, slight tuck of that tailbone under. Holding wide on, wide on the stick, I want you to pull apart, activate the posterior line. Keeping the chin neutral, rib cage drawn in. Arms are gonna go back to where you can comfortably. All fingers stay connected to the stick. As it's coming over the forehead, then you're gonna push into the stick. Pull apart, breathing. Again, mindful of alignment, important to know that I don't want you to work into pain, right? So really be in tune with how you are feeling today. I will give uh, some variations or regressions for certain exercises today. Pull apart, and you'll notice as you go through the set, 
it feels a little bit better and maybe you go back a little bit further. So two more here, pull apart. As it comes forward, push into the stick. One more, pull apart and push in. Excellent. Let's mobilize our neck. So we're gonna take our stick mobility stick right to our T-spine. Take your stance a little bit wider than hip width. Palms rest right on your belly, softening to your knees slightly. And I just want you to drop your chin to your chest. So eyes leave the head looking down and then looking upward towards the ceiling. So just be mindful. Again, not moving into pain. Upward towards the ceiling. Then come neutral. You're gonna dip your left ear towards your left shoulder. Let's do two more here. Excellent. One more. These always feel good. And then over to your right. And you'll notice kind of the difference between each side throughout class. One more. Coming center, drop the chin to the chest and then do some neck rolls to the right, up through center and then down. Excellent. Let's do one more before we change direction. Try to keep those shoulders down and reverse. This can make you dizzy, so focus on your breathing. Go nice and slow. Good. One more. Excellent. Take a moment. Come center. Release the stick. We're going to take our six foot or seven foot, and if you don't own stick mobility, you could use a PVC pipe or wooden dowel. We're going to go into a bow and arrow. So your stick is going to be placed about three inches out from the midline of your right foot. Stance a little bit wider than hip width. Your left hand, palm is going to face uh, forward, so the thumb is facing down. And your bottom right hand is going to find the sticker. Going into your stick mobility bow and arrow, I want you to lead with your hips first, then press out with the upper body. With that top left arm, you're going to kind of pull, draw back as that bottom arm is pushing. Connect with your feet, and then if you want to get a little bit of your front line, your tailbone is going to come under. You're still driving down into the stick, and then angle, look upward towards the ceiling. Then square off, a little bit of flossing. So the stick is going to come forward onto the sagittal plane and then outward onto the frontal plane. Pause here. Slowly come out of your bow and arrow. Over to the other side. Midline of the foot once again. Right hand, thumb faces down, palm forward. Sending the right hip out and then follow through with the upper body. Pause here first. Then take that tailbone under, get a little bit into that front line. This side for me is quite a bit tighter than the other side. And then square off once again, a little bit of flossing, arms coming forward, and then back out onto that frontal plane to your side. Good. Hold here and gently come out of your stretch. We're going to take the stick now to our lower back. Palms are going to face forward. Same stance, hip hinge forward. This right side is going to draw over towards the left. Just want to work a little bit into our front line here. So we're going to breathe through the nose if possible, and we're going to articulate our neck, kind of a little bit of flossing into the chest, into the shoulder, and down into the bicep. So you're looking upward towards the ceiling, and then downward towards the floor. Now, as you can see, I'm not shifting my body weight. So I'm staying in that hip hinge, keeping my body weight fairly centered. Let's do one more, upward towards the ceiling, downward towards the floor, and then transition. Left side is gonna come over to the right where you can comfortably. And then angle, look up, nice and slow. So again, get a little bit into that front line you're also getting some work into your T-spine and into your lower back. Come center, gently release, slowly come to stand. We're gonna take our stick, and I'm gonna go on diagonal here, angle it inward towards you. 
You can take your right hand on top if you wish, working into our feet, because our feet are gonna be vital for our kettlebell swing prep and our kettlebell swing, and along with the goblet squat that I have planned for today and the dumpy squats. Outside right foot, you're gonna just work into the toes, work into the fascia of the bottom of the foot. So we're just doing a light releve. Take the next one, pause at the top, and gently shift out and in. Not from the knee, but from the foot and ankle. Inward and outward, getting a nice stretch. Inward and outward, and release. Over to the left side. So spread out the toes, really work into the ball of the foot, keeping that horse stance. Just minimal pressure into the floor. Let's do two more here. Excellent. Hold at the top. I'll square off towards you right now. And then a little bit in, a little bit out. Going back on that diagonal. Good. Let's do two more. And then we have one more drill before we get into our kettlebell work. Excellent. And release. Take your short stick now. I just want to prime our hips just a little bit. So uh, typically we would be using for our um, hip openers two of the long sticks, but I'm just going to use today the shorter stick on my right side, longer stick on the left. So they're at about um, three and nine, and I'm going to step in, or take them forward a little bit, sorry about that, and drive down through the left foot, elevate the right knee. As I do so, and I want you to follow along, you're going to take the shoulders down and back. Back, you should feel your lats. And now, keeping the knee essentially still, we're going to externally rotate as our right foot comes across to the right, excuse me, to the left side and put a little bit of pressure there. Push into the stick with the arch of the foot. Keeping the knee essentially still, we're going to do some internal rotation. So the outside of the foot now is pressing into the right stick. Watch for shifting your body weight. And then again, externally rotate, arch of the right foot, pushing into the left stick. Breathe, focus on your alignment, transition to the other side, hold, and come back to center. Gently release, shake it out, waking up our hips. Okay, pressing down through the right foot. Take a moment, draw up the left knee. Externally rotate left foot to the right, push. Maybe about 30% of your tension, not too much here. And then transition, internal. Push, breathe. Excellent. One more time, external. That left foot pushing into that right stick. You should have a little shake and quiver here as we're warming up. And then transition, internally rotate. You should fire that hip, feel a little bit of glute, and release. Excellent. Take a moment, shake it out. Our short stick is going to go to the side. Now, um, one of my favorite kettlebell exercises is the kettlebell windmill. Now, I consider it kind of like a weighted mobility drill and it requires mobility, strength, and stability. It's also often an exercise that isn't quite always performed correctly and that's where stick mobility comes in as a great way to learn and kind of prime the pattern, prime the brain for setting up the technique of the windmill. Your windmill could be bottom loaded or top loaded. Today, we're just starting with a stick mobility stick. So we're gonna take our stick now behind our back and I want you to place it right where your shoulder blades are and then take a second to almost like corkscrew the palms forward. So drop those shoulders. Our stance, so remember the camera's gonna flip me. This is gonna be my right foot, even though it's my left so you could follow along. We're gonna take our stance just about hip width apart. From here, I'm gonna turn and shift my toes 
to the right. Now, if I was loading with a kettlebell up overhead, the wrist would be right in line with the shoulder, in line with the hip, and then in line with the ankle. So we have our stance. Now, this right leg, I'm going to keep that leg straight. My left knee is going to soften as I go into the hip hinge. So there is a hip hinge in our windmill. From here, much like our bow and arrow, I'm going to take my left hip towards my side wall here, towards the outdoors. So I'm going to hinge, and then my bottom right side, right, I'm going to look up at the stick to the left, is going to come down to the floor. So as you can see, this right knee is bent, left leg is straight, gripping the ground with the feet, your connection with the feet and your windmill is gonna be extremely important. And everything is stacked here. So instead of folding forward, I'm able to open up my chest. As you can see, there's that hip hinge, connect, grip with the ground. Now crush the stick, so meaning both palms are pushing into our stick. And then we're slowly gonna to connect to the feet, inhale, exhale and come up to stand. We're gonna do two more on this side. So my left shoulder is above the hip, hip above the foot, toes slightly turned out to the right. Hip hinge, that right knee is gonna soften, left leg stays straight, and I'm gonna hook my stick mobility stick to the floor, and then I, what would be, if I'm top loading, the kettlebell, or the top of your stick mobility stick here. Again, grip the ground with the feet. Inhale, exhale, come to stand. We're gonna perform one more. Hip hinge, that right knee softens, chest stays open, looking upward towards the top of that left stick. Push into the floor, connect with the legs, shrunk of the body, and come to stand. Now, Fixing your feet as we go to the other side. We're just gonna shift our toes towards the left. So from here, slight shift of the toes. Take a second and scan. So your right shoulder is above the hip, above the ankle. Push into the stick. We're gonna start that hip hinge, so it's like this lateral hip hinge. And as I'm going into it, the left side hooks to the floor. I can slide down. Again, staying connected with the feet. This left knee is softened, and this right leg is straight. Connect with the ground, inhale, exhale, crush the stick, come to stand. Perfect. So if you're somebody that struggles with your mobility, using a stick mobility stick unweighted for a kettlebell windmill is a great option. It's a great regression and priming pattern. Push into the stick. Come to stand. Let's do one more. Focus on that hip hinge. Chest stays open, right? Your mid back, lower back, I mean, excuse me, upper back is pressing against the stick behind you. Hold here. Inhale, exhale, feel that connection first with the feet, with the legs, with the core trunk of the body, and come to stand. Well done. Okay, moving on, I just want to go through quickly two techniques of the kettlebell clean. So if you have experience <laughs> with the kettlebell clean, I'm gonna use my hard style bell hill here, but the same technique would apply for a competition bell. And again, as we go through the, this portion of our workout today, if you don't own a kettlebell, you could use a dumbbell. To clean the bell safely off the ground, so if you're, you know, you own a bell, you've been using one for a while, but you're not sure how to pick it up off the ground, I just wanted to teach it really quickly, and I'll do it just on one side for the sake of time. So I have the bell in between the arch of my feet, and the bell, lip of the bell here, because I'm gonna clean with my left hand, is angled towards the ankle of my right foot. So the bell gets clean with a leg drive, leg drive upward, packing the shoulder 
elbow is going to come back. You're communicating with the handle of the bell and then it's going to come into that proper wrap position like so. And then you decelerate with it. But if you are new to kettlebell training, you could assist with the clean. So the other right hand would come to the bell also and you would decelerate with it and then clean like so. Okay, just wanted to cover that just in case you're moving your kettlebells around during class. First exercise, we're going over the kettlebell swing. Now, typically, uh, working the hip hinge, there's a fantastic drill of taking a stick behind the back, PVC pipe, wooden dowel, and teaching somebody how to properly hip hinge. So the kettlebell swing is a hip hinge, not a squat. What I really like about the stick mobility drill, driving energy back into the wall behind you, creating that connection with the posterior chain, I feel like it's a little bit more effective in feeling how that posterior drive creates the float, that seamless float of the kettlebell swing, working into that pendulum, right? So you know when your technique is correct, no matter the weight of the bell, it should just feel weightless. So I love how the tools we choose to use become a seamless extension of our bodies. For this drill, you're gonna leverage your stick mobility stick against the wall behind you and face out from the wall. We're gonna do this one today with our right hand on top. Your stance is gonna be a little bit wider than hip width. When you're standing tall, you're driving down into the feet engaging your quads, squeezing your glutes, rib cage lifted so it's not, you're not going into an anterior tilt, and you're packing the shoulders, and you're going to feel that connection with the lats. So we're going to hip hinge forward here, and here we are on a diagonal with the eyes, right? So in our setup and in the downswing or backswing of our kettlebell, swing, our eyes are on a diagonal, and then at the top, our eyes are on the horizon. So this also helps as a cue to help where the chin alignment and eye alignment is throughout the entire process of the movement. Going into your hip hinge, I want you to feel connected with your feet. Your knees are bent and just soft right above the ankles. Length through the back, so I want you to push into the wall behind you with about 70% of your strength. So you're gonna feel that connection to packing the shoulders, the connection with the lats, the opening and length of the spine, so the chest is open, length through the back, and then you're gonna push, hold four counts of that push, hold one, two, three, on four, stand up and squeeze. So that will mimic the top of our kettlebell swing. Hip hinge again, lift the belly, lengthen through the back. Remember all our key points. Now really push into the wall behind you. Try to feel a connection now into your hamstrings, right? So we're connected through the feet, up the calf, hamstring, loading that backside, inhale, exhale, squeeze. Good, we got one more and then we're gonna go over the technique with the kettlebell. Hip hinge forward, push, drive back, breathe. Now push with 80% of your strength. Keep driving back, four more counts of holding. Hold one, hold two, hold three, on four, inhale, exhale, and come to stand. So that also helps with creating that powerful posterior drive. So back in the day, they used to call it a hip snap. I don't use that terminology. I, I call it like a, a posterior drive. Okay, going into your actual kettlebell now. So typically when I am using this with a client or priming myself, I'll do like three with the right hand on top, three with the left hand on top. I'll play with the, the length of a hold or uh, you could also play around with um, how much tension you're pushing back into the wall. I'm going to use my hard style bell here on a diagonal. So you're going to set up essentially a triangle. 
Same stance as what we were just in, slightly wider than hip width. Everybody's body is a little bit different. You might have to turn your toes slightly out. Take your hands to your hip line. You're going to hip hinge, similar to what we just did. Now, the bell is the tip of the triangle. Then we're going to hold on to the handle, tip the handle inward towards you, bottom of the bell angled out. Same concept applies. We're packing the shoulder, we're engaging the lats, we have nice length through the back, so we're not hollow and rounding, right? Eyes are on that diagonal and the chest is open. So I'm going to demonstrate a kettlebell swing in the height going into the back swing and coming up working that pendulum. Hip hinge and return the bell to the ground. So now I'm going to face you head on. So sometimes when people are working with their kettlebell and learning the kettlebell swing, they tend to swing with the bell between the thighs low, between the knees, right? So it's a ballistic movement and we want to create and generate power from the backside. We want to keep that pendulum following that float, making it seamless. So the backswing, the hands are going to be high and tight up towards the groin. So here we go. Position of the feet, angle, tilt the bell, pack the shoulders, engage the lats, send the bell back. So at the top of the swing, I'm essentially in a standing plank and simply following the float of the bell. Arms are lengthened and the arms follow. They don't um, draw the bell up. So the arms kind of go along for the ride. Common mistakes in the learning process is not driving enough power from the backside initially and going more into a, a squat than a hip hinge and uh, taking the pelvis and pushing forward. So at the top, we're nice and stacked arms are lengthened right about shoulder height, and then you just follow through into the next repetition. So I hope this was helpful on how you could clean up your kettlebell technique if you're new to it, and how you could use the stick mobility as a way for you to learn the alignment. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out always open to feedback. So our next exercise that we're going to go into is the goblet squat. So this is where we need access to the ceiling. I love the dunphy squat. <laughs> I mean, when I, and it, and it's, as those of you who have done before, it's very sneaky. It's extremely effective and it's a great primer for the goblet squat. So we're going to take our longer stick, push it up into the ceiling. If it leaves a mark, the magic eraser takes it right away, Mr. Clean. Um, so we're stepping in. Your hands now are going to be right around your belly button area. Since we had our right hand on top during our hip hinge for the kettlebell swing, let's take the uh, left hand on top here. Toes are slightly turned out. We're going to do five dumpy squats before we get into our goblet squat. So standing tall at first, eyes forward. We're going to drive up into the wall, into the ceiling with about 70% of our strength. Start to descend down into your squat here. Still connected. Now, as you can see, we're taking the elbows in packing the shoulders, having that nice length through the spine, and now push, press away from the floor, and come to stand. Good. Pull yourself to the earth. Bring yourself down. Watch your alignment with your pelvis. Again, elbows are in, neck is nice and relaxed. Grip the ground with your feet. Inhale, exhale. Start to press away from the floor. Good. Three more here. Pull yourself into the squat. Drive that stick into the ceiling. 
Excellent. Take a breath. Come to stand. The great thing about the dumpy squat is you could do a lot of alignment correction hands-on when you're working with somebody or with yourself. So if you're working out alone, film yourself, watch it back. Notice like the little nuances that you may need to uh, work on in your technique. Come down, hold. Take a moment, breathe. Inhale, exhale. Slowly come to stand. Whew, okay. Stick down. And I'm going to show you um, two ways that you could hold your kettlebell for the goblet squat. And if you don't have a kettlebell and you're using a dumbbell, you could cup, goblet, the head of uh, the dumbbell, or you could hold each side for your squat. So to kind of change it up, I'm going to be using my um, sport competition bell, 12 kg. Two ways. So I would step back, angle the left thumb back slightly, taking it into the back swing, and then holding the kettlebell like so, upside down, and kind of squeezing elbows in, a little bit of bicep work here. And then the other variation is a two hand clean. So what you're gonna do is place the bell between the arch of both feet. I'll go on a diagonal here. Same concept applies with the kettlebell clean that I demonstrated before. You're gonna go into a bit of a hip hinge and the legs drive up the bell. So two hand clean. Now I'm gonna take the hold of the horns, pack the shoulders like so, feet slightly turned out, so you can choose which variation you'd like to use for your bell, and we're gonna go into four goblet squats. Slowly come down into the squat, hold, breathe, inhale, exhale, drive up. Let's make it five, I apologize. Slowly come down, good. Hold, neck is relaxed. Come up. I'm going to go on a diagonal. Go into your squat. Watch your alignment. Excellent. We got two more. Eyes forward, elbows in, squeeze. So we got active back, active biceps. One more. Core is on also. Hold, inhale, exhale, and then safely place the bell back down. So that was how you could implement the Dumfries squats, priming the pattern of a goblet squat with two variations on how to hold the bell. So I hope that was helpful. The next drill we're going to go into is one of my personal favorites. We're going to be using our longer stick. Actually, you know what? I'm going to try to do it today with the shorter stick mobility stick to see if this works just because of spacing. So I may need to supplement quickly with um, the other stick. But we're gonna use now, I'm gonna have to go to the side here using my Slater log for leverage. That way I can kind of demonstrate a little bit cleaner. We're gonna work our way down to the back side. So going into an unweighted kettlebell arm bar. Um, my left hand is my outside arm. My left knee is bent. I love arm bar. So arm bars are great for T-spine mobility uh, and for the shoulder girdle. Also working on stabilization and strength. To get into the arm bar, and I apologize because of just how everything is set up, I'm going to have to utilize my space and just try to <laughs> See if I could fit. So, you're gonna take your stick, leverage it low against the wall. Have your left knee bent, right? Because we're gonna drive down through that foot. And when we drive down through the foot before we roll, we're gonna need that glute on to create stability. This left arm is long and the palm is pushing and leveraging into the wall. 
Now, I am going to show a regression of the windmill. Instead of rolling, let me just demonstrate first, completely over, I'm going to do the modified variation of having that left knee bent. Okay, so let's do this as a group. You're going to push into the wall with that left palm, left leg is bent, nice and slow, working together. I want you to push down through the left foot and start to engage that glute. So glute and hamstring are going to create some stability as we go into the roll. At the same time, that right arm is going to start to sweep. You're going to use the bicep as a pillow and then that left leg comes over. Left foot is flexed, left knee is bent in line with the hip and you're going to angle and look upward into the palm. So if, the, if it was a kettlebell, you would be eyeing your kettlebell. Hold here, and you want that right in line with the shoulder. You're gonna feel a little bit into that front line, tight pec down into the bicep. Breathe, hold four counts, hold one, two, three, on four. We're simply gonna reverse that pattern. So as I start to roll, my right hand is going to slide back down into that start position. So let's do one more. I'm going to come down a little bit. Okay. Left, right arm. Drive down through the foot. Start to roll. And then there we go. The left leg crosses over. Left knee bent in line with the hip. Keep pushing into the wall. If you're very familiar with the arm bar and you want to completely roll, you could do that. Hold here for counts. Hold one, two, three, on four to reverse it. You simply slide through center and release. Excellent. So now we're going to arm bar loaded. I'm just going to get this towel out of the way. You could do the arm bar with your dumbbell if you don't have a kettlebell. Getting into that position, if you have your kettlebell, so you're gonna roll onto one side, similar to how you get into your Turkish get up. We're gonna roll and then we're gonna press. So the bell is gonna be right above the shoulder, above the chest. Same concept applies, right? We're going to push into that left foot, begin that roll, take the leg over, sorry that was a little sloppy, and you're going to hold here. I like to hold for about 10 seconds, so as you can see, my arm is nice and stable, so you want to use a weight that you can manage, hold, keep eyeing that bell, and now slowly reverse it, start to Slide that palm back down and reverse. Roll onto your side, place your kettlebell safely to the ground. Okay, so now we're going over to the other side. That's what we're gonna finish our class with. So my stick was kind of getting in the way. I'm gonna get my vintage dumbbell out of the way. <laughs> I've taken over my living room. <laughs> I'm a very patient husband with all my stuff. Okay, so here we go. I should have used the longer stick, but that's okay. We have the right knee bent. I don't know what that is. Right knee is gonna be bent, left leg long, and now same pattern. We're gonna start that roll. So squeeze that glute, and then your right leg is gonna be bent. Ankle in line with the knee, knee in line with the hip and push into that wall. I'm just going to swap out for my longer stick and then slowly reverse the way that you came. This is going to be better. Okay, now we're going to go into it one more time, unload it. Right leg, squeeze, slide that left arm up and go into your position. Pushing into the wall. Now I went a little too far back. 
there we go. We want that lined up. Hold here four counts. Hold one, hold two, hold three, and then on four, we're going to slowly reverse the way that we came. Good. Switching over to our kettlebell. Or a dumbbell for that manner. Okay. So we have our bell in position. Press it out. We're going to squeeze, right? Drive through that foot. Bell up towards the ceiling. Flex that bottom right foot. Hold. If you want to roll completely over, you can. You're eyeing the kettlebell, right? So it's in your sight. And again, I like to hold anywhere between 10 to 30 seconds, depending on the day and what kind of training I've been doing. Let's slowly come out of it. Reverse the way you came. Take the other hand and slowly roll to release. Excellent. So that's the first time I've ever brought a uh, kettlebells into the stick mobility class like this on a live. <laughs> so thank you for participating and joining in that. We're going to start to unwind. So you're going to take your short stick. Let's move this out of the way. Palms are going to face forward. And then I want you to take your right side over to the left, hook it to the floor and then come down for a nice T-spine stretch. A little bit deeper into the back than what we just did with our um, arm bar. And then slowly come out of it. So typically I'll use a small towel or a slider to get into this position. You wanna center that shoulder. Hold here, looking upward, breathe right between the shoulder blades and then slowly come out of it. Well done. Taking that short stick to the side. Our right leg is going to come forward going into snake reach. One of my personal favorite stretches. So right leg is forward, left leg is back. Stick is going to be to the inside of your right thigh. Your left hand palm is going to come up and then the right hand here is going to slide in between the gap between your shirt and the stick mobility stick. If you need to modify, you could bend your elbow or you could add length. And then you're going to square that left hip forward, focusing right on that shoulder girdle. So you should feel pretty good between the arm bar, the T-spine T stretch we just did, and the snake reach. Slowly come out of it. Take a breath. Inhale, exhale, rotate back into the snake reach. Squeeze that back loop. Make sure it's on. And release. Up and over to the other side. So the uh, left leg is forward. Right hand up. Thread through. This is always my tighter side and rotate. Hold here. Take a moment, breathe into the stretch. Slowly come out of it and then inhale, exhale back into the snake reach. Maybe go a little bit deeper this time. Excellent. Take a moment, release, and now we're going to go into a lunge on a diagonal here. So the left leg is going to be forward. The stick is in the right hand. Slide back. I want you to push down into the floor and then reach back with that left arm. Hold here. Breathe. Come to center, one more. So squeeze that back glute, watch your alignment with your pelvis, drive down through that front foot. Inhale, exhale, reach. 
coming back through center, ease, lower that right knee down. Take your stick now to the top of your right shoulder and go into a hamstring stretch. Square off, flex the foot, length through the back. And you could do like a little windshield wiper. I love these. Train the toes out and inward. So a little bit of a flossing for the hamstring. Take a moment, bend that knee, release the stick. You're in your half kneeling, come to stand, and then we transition to the other side. So right leg is forward, left leg is back, squeeze the glute, chest upright, look back to your right, breathing, close off, maybe go a little bit lower into your lunge, Drive down into the feet, energy through the heel behind you, hold, and then back through center, slowly begin to lower the knee, I can already tell the side is a little bit tighter, and then flex, length through the spine, you can go top of the foot down or angle with the ball of the back foot, shoulders down away from the ears and do just a little bit of a windshield wiper. Toes out and in. Good. Excellent. Take a moment to square off. Half kneeling. And come to stand. So thank you so much for everyone that joined today and those of you that are going to watch back the recording. I haven't taught in a month. <laughs> and whenever I hit that start button, I have to admit I get a little bit nervous and then Halfway through the class, I'm like so relaxed. I was super excited about the opportunity to introduce a modality like a kettlebell, which I've been training with for the past 15 years. And uh, thank you, Stick Mobility. If anybody has any questions or feedback, please reach out to Stick Mobility directly, or you could reach out to me on my IG page at kelsbells88. So this class is gonna be uploaded to the YouTube channel and Instagram page, and on YouTube, all classes are there. We're almost at 300, along with uh, episodes of the Movement Made Better podcast. So I will be back next Tuesday at 10 a.m., and we are going to start to progress a little bit of the work that we did today. Thank you, and have a great day.